Thank you very much. Amen. <laughs> My goodness gracious. We have a lot to pray about this week, and also, but first, I have an announcement, and I, I know my brother Jimmy Hudnall back there. We're going to have a water baptism service next week, and if you want to be baptized, contact us this week as we line everybody up and get ready, because next week, at the conclusion of the service, we will, we will be having our water baptism. Amen. I have a sweet little angel that's ready to be baptized. Amen. I, I talked with Mary uh, Wallace just a little bit ago. Uh, Brother Woody's doing so good, they may send him home in a little while. So to keep him in there. For you that may not know, our, our sheriff had a six-way bypass. Uh, and then not only did he have a six-way bypass, they had to clean the six minor arteries that was there with them. They were completely stopped as well. Uh, the doctor says it's a miracle. Well, we serve a miracle worship. <laughs> Amen. And uh, doing so good, his levels were great. They were bringing him one more test and may send him home in a little while. But continue praying for Woody that God will give him a speedy recovery. Brother Ronnie Gross, keep praying for Ronnie. Give us our miracle, amen. Uh, a friend of mine, J.D. Reynolds, a young guy, not even 40, had a major heart attack as well. But he's home, they, they call him time, they said, they call it the widow maker. Yes. It's the one I had, preacher, what do you think about that? And I said, well, I'm glad they call it. And this little wife standing there, she said, me too, because I didn't want to be a widow. Went in and prayed with them, and just remember J.D., Terry Collier, Brother Mike Fielding, who is back home with us. Brother Mike, thank you very much. And also Rodney Parrish, uh, that got hit by the tree, recovering. The doctor said he'd never be able to walk again on uneven ground. He's walking on uneven ground and doing things. The doctors just marvel at, at his recovery and what's being accomplished already. Keep praying for Rodney. If you have a need this morning, just lift your hands to the Lord. Brother David Curtis, lead us to the Lord. Lord, we come to you this morning so thankful for another opportunity to come into your house and worship the Lord and praise you. Father, for each and every one of your needs that have been mentioned here today, Father, I pray that you would reach down and touch and meet everyone. God, for the healing, Lord, for our sheriff, God, for all the others. Lord, I pray for just continued strength and healing, Lord, in the situation, God, for those that may be in need of comfort, God. Ushers, if you come to receive a tithe and offering this morning, you go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. How many loves the Lord here this morning? Yeah. You young guys get to feel a little better. We got two basketball players, I understand, been using that gym quite a bit, but they are Brother Jerry. They get ready to take on all you youngsters soon. Amen. Tell me, go forth in Jesus' name.
If you enjoy that, hallelujah. Well, <coughs> as you know, we have a women's conference going on, and we had several call in not going to be able to be here, and that's all our special singing. But I'm going to sing for you. this morning. So if, if I gotta sing, I gotta sing what I like to sing. So y'all just hold on and it, it might get ugly. But I'm gonna try it anyway. Amen. So uh we're gonna we'll do it real slow to start off with. We we're gonna start off real slow and then we're gonna come in and we're gonna let we're gonna have some music. We're gonna get y'all laughing and having a good time. So I can preach to you. <laughs> what I gotta preach to you? I hope you brought some band-aids. <laughs> Are y'all ready? I'm gonna take a trip. Anybody wanna take a trip with me to heaven?
that's a crew right there, amen. <laughs> Poor Randy just sat up here and didn't know what to think with him, amen. <laughs> I did for years, Randy, and still in shock, amen. <laughs> now, a couple Wednesday nights ago, we got into 2 Timothy, and the Lord dealt with me all week. Uh, I, I, and I mentioned to him that, that you would hear that I'm not on a political soapbox. But folks, our country's in a mess. And, and it's not going to be the donkey or the elephant, but it's going to be the lamb that can straighten it out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any, anybody agree with me that? We've got to get Jesus Christ back in our nation like we've never had him before. And uh, we've had an eventful week. Thank you for being understanding. Thank you for the water. God bless my daughter. Didn't she do good? Her and Angela. And I, I told somebody if, if I could choose a sister, it would be an Angela. That way, Dale could be my brother in law. <laughs> Shoot basketball. Y'all, he's enjoying the gym. He and Jerry more than the kids are. Amen. So when they get real buff and come into church like this, Jerry, we know you've been working out at the gym again. Amen. But uh, we, we are in the hardest time I've ever seen in my life. Right. Thank you for being understanding this week for my family, uh, having to bury a little 15-year-old cousin. Uh, devastating. You know, we have no promise of tomorrow. I don't know who you are and think that we can just control destiny. You can't. We have no promise of tomorrow. The Bible said we should not say we're going to do thus, thus, and thus, but if God wills, we will do this. But today I want to take you to 2 Timothy chapter 3 about this period of time. Now, the word perilous simply means dangerous. It's a dangerous time in which we live. I don't know about you, but I was raised, now I was born here in Trinity, moved when I was a little boy. But we were raised in a, a, a metropolitan area called Thicket, Texas. <laughs> Population about 200 people to get them all to show up. And, but we lived in a time, John, that down when we were there, we never locked the doors. Well, you leave your keys in your vehicle. You never had any worry or stress that someone was going to break in on you or anything. The neighbor might come and knock on your door and ask for help. But it, we lived in a, I, I know we didn't, I'm not Andy Griffin, and I'm talking about Mayberry. I, I know that. But you were raised like that. A lot of you were, that it was a simple time. And, and, and life was just, you didn't see all this chaos and all of this dangerous times that we live. You better be careful going to the grocery store. Surely don't go down to downtown Houston and leave your keys in your vehicle and expect you're going to have it when you get back. It's not going to happen. Don't be caught. Kids used to could play at the neighbor's house after dark. Walk home in the dark and you never worried about it. Do y'all remember those days? And now you better be careful. And you have to constantly guard yourself. <clears throat> Pastor, can you explain some? Yes. We are getting ready to go home. Amen. And the enemy is working overtime to destroy and to hinder everything he can. I, I constantly have to remind people, and I've reminded the family, the sanctuary was full late Wednesday afternoon, and everybody knows why, why God just took her. God doesn't kill people. You, you need to understand the scripture, John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and destroy. And 
there's a comma, and Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We live in a wicked time and a wicked day that the enemy is working overtime to get everyone he can doomed to hell. Right. Now, I'm going to go ahead before I get into this message and give you something else. The churches of this world are going to have to give an account to God of what we have allowed to happen in the body of Christ. We have separated ourselves from other believers because we have a little disagreement in some issues. And so we get so focused on the other church that the enemy's running around us and stealing and killing and doing everything he can. And we're sitting here wondering, and getting jealous because the church down the road is a little bigger than we are. And they got a new van and we had not yet. And he's got our focus on issues and things that don't mount to a hill of man. Right. And if anybody listens to me out there, I don't care what the name is over the door. If you believe in the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the salvation of your sin and the forgiveness of you, then we are a common body and we need to focus on the enemy. so caught up. The Bible said that hell enlarges herself daily. Daily. Jesus himself even saw, talked about the two ways. Dallas, he said, straight and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life and few be there that find it. Broad is the way that lead to destruction and many will find themselves therein. So a few and many, I don't know if you were a math major, but that means that their odds are a whole lot greater over here. They're going this way and we're trying to get this way. Why don't we reach and grab someone and get them come the way we are instead of worrying about junk? Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, I love you enough to go to heaven with you. And if you're mad at your husband, say, I ain't going to heaven with you. <laughs> I'll see you this week. Paul writes this letter to a young preacher. Boy, I remember being a young preacher. That was a long time ago. Chris did a long time ago. I, I, I'll never forget my dad got real ill and... Uh, I had to take over the church that state headquarters called and said, we want you to fill in this interim pastor. And I thought that man was nuts. <laughs> I was raised down here. We didn't have cell phones. Right. We had party lines. <laughs> and you can hear some old sister on the rear head at the phone going, that's right, he's telling you the truth. <laughs> I said, I was raised here. These people know me. They know what I did. <laughs> he said, you won't have to just man up. Your dad's sick. Now you take that church. I said, yes, sir. And I, I never forget walking up. Now, walking up just on the stage and reading music, that was one thing. But now i got to break this word open and look at my Sunday school teacher, the adult Sunday school teacher. And they knew that Bible inside and out. And, and I get a little nervous. If you can believe that, I, I did get nervous at one time. And I'd go to preaching, and I just wouldn't quite get that verse just right. And I had an old sister that said on her name was Granny Davis. She'd go, <laughs> and I knew I missed that one. Amen. <laughs> and, and after church, she would come and say, I've never heard you quote it like that before. Amen. But, and, and I remember getting nervous. But I remember when the Holy Ghost got on me. Made all the difference in the world. I didn't care who was sitting out there. And, and we had church. The little church began to grow. We were just rolling. And I'm going to tell this. And one Sunday night, we took in 43 people. Back then, we had membership. Well, the church split and, and had a group that got 
filled with the Spirit and they didn't like it, so they come down and they wanted to know if they could come and have church pass. I said, absolutely. Took them all in, baptized all 43 one night. I could write a book. One sister got happy. She was a little bigger than most. She got excited and went to shouting in that bastard rig, and it washed me out of the bathroom, <laughs> over the steps, and down in the deep. I come crawling back up the steps. The church has lost it. They're rolling. They're defeated. And, and I crawl back in, Brother Gail, and just go head first in. And finally got all 43 baptized. And finally, one of them come up and on the back seat. I think you're going to make it. I look like I just come out of war. My shirt was uncovered. I was just all to pieces. But yeah, that church. I want to tell you something. We got too much division in the body of Christ. As long as this word is preached correct, then you better understand. Jesus said one time to a bunch of if they're not against us, then they got to be for us. We need to quit being jealous and quit being caught up in junk and get our mind and our focus of going to heaven. Does anybody hear me in this house? Amen. Well, now this young preacher has gotten old. Dirt. And uh, I've got to preach the word because I'm accountable for everything I speak to you. And I'm not going to get to heaven and you look back and point at me and say, he lied to me. Because that's why I put it on the screen so you can see for yourself. This is the word of God. Paul writes this young preacher and says, but know this. There's some things you need to know. Amen. Right? Yes. You need to know about your salvation. Amen. You need to know that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you don't make it tomorrow morning, that you're going to wake up in the arms of Jesus. These are some things you need to know. Amen? Amen? Amen. And make sure. In the last days... Perilous times will come, or dangerous times. For men will be lovers of themselves. <laughs> Y'all got six hours? <laughs> what about me? You know my favorite person with two thumbs pointing at him? We are caught up about us. And we're so introverted about us and all of us that there's people dying all around us, but yet we're not concerned because we love ourselves more than anybody else. My grandson, and, and I've, I've told you this before, I love it. The grandkids can get in some of this drama. Y'all have any drama at y'all's house? If y'all don't come over to my house, my grandkids, y'all get them. Uh, and, and boy, they'll just be in there. And, and finally, they involve Logan. And Logan just stopped everybody and said, uh, And how does this affect me? <laughs> he said, Didn't think so. <laughs> Went on his way. What we need to do is quit getting caught up in so much junk, and we really need to be concerned about others and begin to look out. How many of you got lost loved ones? What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? I don't know all your lost loved ones. Don't point at the preacher. I'm not the only one that's supposed to go out and witness and try to lead someone to Christ. You're sheep. Are you not? Amen. Then beget sheep. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, i got to invite somebody. Amen. <laughs> Lovers of money. Oh, that doesn't take place in our world. You'll sell your soul for a dollar. Boasters. Proud. Blaspheming. Mm. <laughs> Y'all got to hold on with me. When I saw the word blaspheming, look how they're doing God. 
Brother Darrell, look what they've done to our Savior. And we read about the crucifixion and we get so hard about it. And we can't believe people do that. But now we'll take him out of our government. We'll take him out of our school. We'll take him out of our family. We'll do all that. And God doesn't mean anything to this world. But I've got news for everybody in the world that every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I saw somebody in public office the other day get swore in on the Koran. I don't believe in the Koran or the Koran. I don't believe in that. I believe in the Word of God. I believe every official in the United States of America ought to lay his hand on God's holy word and vow that he was the Lord. Disobedient to parents. My grandchildren, she's going to kiss at me now. I can't do anything. Straighten up, Andrew. Man, Elise is perfect. <laughs> I can't, I, I don't understand this. But I'll. Spare the rod, spoil the child. I don't need somebody knocking on my door. What right do you have to bust their little hind in? I gave life to them. I feed them. I told them. I'm supposed to instruct them and lead them to heaven. I believe in the right hand of fellowship. Hallelujah. Come on in. I got a kid to smart off to their parents. I don't understand that, Barbara. I got threatened at 56 years old that my mama gonna hit me in the mouth for talking back. I'm a grown, I'm a grandfather. I went down to her house and said something. She said, don't you sass me, boy. I'll pop you in the mouth. I'm in the front yard of my mother's house begging, Mama, please don't get me. <laughs> Disobedient parents. Let me tell every young person something in here. The greatest fan you have on your side and the greatest person in your life will be your parents. Because when all your friends turn their back and leave you hung out to dry, it's your parents that's going to come get you out of trouble, and they're going to help you get it through life and get it straight. You don't understand it right now, maybe, but let me tell you, the greatest person in your life is going to be your parent. Right. Amen. 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 So you might not understand that, number 30. You might not understand that at all. You think your mom and dad's not cool and, and, and your mom and dad don't have a clue in life. Son, they've been there, done that, bought the shirt and trying to save you some misery that they may have went through one time in their life. So you've got to understand, every old wrinkle on the face of somebody that's in your family, those are war lines. They have fought the devil. They have went ahead and got the victory. They've done everything. Don't you mistake that for weakness. But let me tell you, they loved you. So you owe them respect. Why? Because they have done everything in your life for you. I'm thankful for my dad, my mother, my grandparents, everybody that affected my life, and I respect them, and they deserve my respect. <laughs> Unthankful. Unholy. Oh, my Lord. Don't get back to unholy. <laughs> I ain't never seen the like of junk in my life. I can't find a job. 99 piercings in the face, horns up here and all. I don't want you on my job either. Anything anti-God, therefore. 
unholy. We live in a society that's unholy. Amen. Go on. I, I got some more catch up here in just a minute. Unloving? Don't tell me you understand that. They, Paul said there comes a time they're going to be unloving. Don't you have a baby and go in the dumpster and walk off like you got some guy? I don't understand that. That's not natural. I have told you over the years, I guarantee you, you want to find out what's natural and what true nature alignment is? Why don't you go try to pull an old setting hen and get the eggs out from under it? She's going to start here and work her way up and do every bit of you can. Why don't you go to a, a little nest of coons and crawl up there and reach in and get that little baby out there? I guarantee you, you're going to come down like this because they'll fight you to their death. We need to get back to where life has a meaning in the human being that we will fight to the death before you think about it. Unforgiving. Well, that takes place in the church. Scripture said, forgive and shall be forgiven you. But if you hold all this inside of you, how can God forgive you? And you want God to be merciful and forgive you, but yet you won't be merciful to somebody else. Has anybody in here ever been wrong? You can raise your hand. You just smiled and went on, didn't you? comes a point you've got to get over some things. You've got to choose that you're going to be bigger. And you're going to release. Don't mean you forget. But you have to release. And let them go. If the same person is poison for me, continually, continually, I can forgive them, but I don't need to hang around them. Doesn't mean you don't like them anymore, but there's a distance you've got to keep. But you've got to learn to be a be forgiving, especially in the body of Christ. Because if you hang around people long enough, you're going to get your feelings hurt. Don't care who you are. Pastor, you mean you've got your feelings hurt before? Absolutely. I left service for six weeks in a row, and a little lady sat out there and just shook my hand and said, that was a warm message. Pastor, that was every week a warm message. And I got to thinking about this, so I went to the dictionary and flipped over and said, warm, the meaning, not so hot. <laughs> got rid of her. Now, you're going to get your feelings Well, how did Jesus respond when they spat in his face for Puffed his beard. Yeah, not worth it. And then even when they hung him on God got this hill on the cross, Jay. Listen to the words he echoed to his father. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now we are to pattern our life after the Christ. Amen. And if we pattern our life after the Christ, we've got to learn to forgive. Then there are slanderers and without self-control, brutal despisers of good. We see that every day in the news. Traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. That is very prevalent in the world in which we live. That people are more concerned about feeling good and pleasure than they are coming and getting their souls ready to meet the Christ. And here's the one that I really, we need to get this back. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people you turn away. Now, you've got to understand, in the book of Corinthians it says this, and he called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And he said, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I don't understand these people that go under the banner of Christianity and there's not a visible change to their life. They still act. They still talk. They still do everything like they did. I want to tell you the blood of Jesus Christ when it touches you and you accept Him as Lord and Savior, there is a definite difference in your life. That old man is dead and a new one is alive in this state. Somebody hear me. There's power in the blood of Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. Don't you tell me that you've got an experience with God and there's not a change. I want to tell you nobody had to tell me that I was saved. Why? Because my whole appearance and countenance changed when I accepted Jesus Christ. I didn't look at things like I did before. I wasn't caught up in all of the stuff. I loved everybody in the church. When I got up from the altar, I loved everybody. Even though the one, when I was young, I played, boy, I am just playing. I'd get a little loud and had one sister out in the church would go. <laughs> I went, and she'd go. I'd go, and I'd crank it up. <laughs> It may have been a slow gospel song, but I was whipping it all over, just getting it faster than I could. <laughs> After I got saved, <laughs> she'd go, turn it down. <laughs> then somebody come up and say, couldn't hear you. I said, <laughs> I didn't get angry. I want to tell you, there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't care if where sin has grabbed you and you sunk to. I don't care of all the things that's going on in your life and, and, and what is wrong and all of that. You haven't got so low that the blood of Jesus Christ can't reach down and the hand of my Savior and lift you out and all of those old holes of the world will have to release and let go. Why? Because there's power in Jesus Christ and to make you brand new again. Somebody praise you for this fact. Amen. as a Christian. My name's in so-and-so church. Good for you. I'm not really caught up in what church my name is at. I'm just concerned if it's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's where it better be at. All right. Somebody asked me, said, why don't we have membership? Don't want it. I'd rather have family than membership. And if you come twice, you're part of my family, and I love it. We're the family of God. Amen. I don't want to go and you come up here and lie and stand before everybody and go, I'll agree to every rule you've got. I got you're not going to do that. I'd rather have family. Family. Why? Because we forgive family when they mess up and fall. We don't cast them out. There's a lot of people that want to cast too many people out. You better quit casting out and start dragging in. Amen. Because I love you and you're part of my family. And if you come twice, you're part of the family of River Life Church. And I expect Christmas gift. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go mercy. Oh, and by the way, he said, turn away from such people. Like, don't you let anybody convince me. I guarantee you, when you got saved, got filled with the Holy Ghost, Brother Gail Melton, there was a definite change in your life. I guarantee you, old Jack Wade, when he had black hair back then, and you got saved and got filled with the Holy Ghost, I guarantee you, there was a change in your life. Amen. 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 There's power yes. in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. For this sort are those who creep in the households and make captives of gullible women. Notice it said women, not men. <laughs> I didn't say that. It's in the book. I think the reason they put that. <laughs> I have seen families. I'm going to say it anyway. Your mom will just get ready. You remember when they ever bought soap operas? You know, they had As the World Turned and Husband Called As the Beans Burned. <laughs> in and hearing conversations. 
conversation. So and so doing this, so and so this one. I'm going. Who are you talking about? <laughs> On the days of our lives, I'm telling you, he just had to do what? <laughs> you know that's not real, don't you? <laughs> and you'd blow them out of the water, amen. And Jack, they were so wrapped up. I had one little sister, when I took over the church, she was having a prayer request. She threw her hand up. I said, yes, Sister Graham, what is it? She said, we need to pray for Festus. <laughs> I said, ma'am? She said, yeah, I'm done slow. He got captured. <laughs> Women loaded down with sin, led away by various lusts, and we can go ahead and put men in there as well, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Here's the truth. You can listen to everybody you want to. You can turn on your TV and get anything you want to hear to satisfy that old sinful nature that you've got. But if you want to be set free and you want the truth, you better get in the Word of God. The Word of God is the only thing going to set you free. Too. Now, let me go ahead and say this as well. Because everybody has opinion and they try to dissect Scripture. But I have one rule that I live by. I don't want unspiritual people trying to give me spiritual advice. I don't go for that. I got to know somebody who's been faithful that sees in the Word of God. I need to know somebody has lived the life. They have been through the storm. They've been through the battle and come up and put their arm around me and say, let me tell you something, son. I've been there, and I'm going to tell you what God's faithful. What you need to do is hold on because the Word of God says, yeah, I'll take that instruction, David Curtis. I'll take it to my grave. Why? Because there's spiritual people that's fought the battle. They have been there, and they have some instruction for the younger people. I'm here to tell you some of you young people need to look somebody in the church that's been through everything under the storm. You can understand, and I can't even imagine some of them, but they're sitting here in the house of God with victory, and they still got hands raised. I think I just is hoping. Before anybody else. They're never able to come to the truth because they do not want to surrender to the Word of God. By the way, this is what you're going to be judged by. So you better get it straight down here. Amen? Don't not mad at me yet? Hold on. Go on to the next one. Now, as Janice and Jambres resisted Moses, now who are these characters? They're magicians. <coughs> Moses had to go to Pharaoh and said, the Lord said, let my people go. No, that ain't going to happen. I've got them enslaved in my country. They're doing labor. That ain't going to happen. Veronica, he said, brought his magicians in. They threw down their staffs and they become slaves. Moses looked at Aaron and go, he throws his down. His snakes buried him. And took care of the rest of the snakes. And he reached back down and takes it and it's a staff again. Magicians try something else. God counters even greater. And finally, till all these plagues started taking place, and the last one was the firstborn is going to be dead in all of Egypt unless the blood is applied to the doorpost. It's like the seal of salvation. Now, you've got to understand, they resisted him, but let me tell you the end of the story. 2.7 million people come out of Egypt walking out in victory before they left. They got all the gold and stuff you can imagine, and they went on. And God may have kept them in the wilderness for 40 years, but I want to tell you one thing. God's deliverance is always sure. Amen. Now, the reason that they, do you realize how close they got to the promised land? They were almost within a mile. God said, they're not ready to move in. Take them for another round. 
And they wandered for 40 years until that perverse generation that was ever learning but can never come to the knowledge of truth died off. Even Moses himself, the <laughs> pastors get aggravated. We do. Moses gets in the flesh and strikes a rock for water again without the instruction of God. And he does not even get to go into the promised land himself. Because he's disobedient to God. And he said, go to the mountain and look at it. Oh man, I, I'm not going to finish, but y'all just hold bear with me. He sends 12 spies into the promised land. And they come back with a stain between two with grapes just all over it. Unbelievable cluster, just magnificent. And they was running back to the promise, or where Moses was at from the promised land. And I have never been to Brookshire's or H-E-B or Kroger's and picked up a thing of grapes without some falling off. Have you? So you can't tell me while they were running that some of the grapes didn't drop to the ground. And while they were running, grapes were splattering and the promises were sticking all over them. I'm taking you to a land that flows with milk and honey. Never seen a place like this. And they come back stuck with grapes, splatters, all the promises all over them. And they tell Moses, we can't take the land. Giants are there. How in the world can you say that you cannot obtain victory when the promises of God is stuck all over you? Amen. Amen. Anybody hear me? How in the world can you say we cannot? When God's going to promise you will, but you got the promises sticking all over you. How in the world can you say we can? You might not be able to, but God can do all things. And what in the scripture did he say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So these people of the day resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. They're going to progress no farther. Let me tell you what. I don't care how much unrest is in the world today. I don't care how bad it looks. They're not going to progress any farther than God says they will. He said, I can make a kingdom to rise and a king overnight and take him down in the span of a day. When God says enough is enough, it's enough. Anybody hear me? Let that encourage your faith. For their folly will be manifest to all. Or we could say that this week. As theirs also was. Verse 10. But you have carefully followed my doctrine. He's talking to Timothy. The manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, and perseverance. And I'm going to end with this one. Can we go back? Let me end with this one, Sister Perenza. It's this. <laughs> said they're not going to progress any farther. Do you know why maybe we have so much unrest in homes? Because you act one way here and something different in your home away from everybody else. If you want your children to follow you in the ways of Christ, show them the example when you're home and at church and in life in general. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, I'm not going to finish this. I knew I would. But, folks, I'm not shaken at what's going on in the world. I'm not in spiritual unrest. Mike, I'm not. Because I know what's got to happen. Brother Nick, I know it can only go so far. We're finally getting a little taste of what the rest of the world has been going through. And it's scaring us to death. But none of this is going to progress any farther.
when God said enough's enough. But he said, in the moment you think not, the Son of Man coming. And he's going to take us out of it. We look at this life like it's heaven. Come on. This is not heaven. Could you imagine going to a place that everything is perfect? No sickness, no heartache, no sorrow. Never have a bad day. Never have a bad day. Be with our loved ones. That's waiting for us. And be with Jesus, Brenda. The one that we started with, the one we're going to end up with. The author finisher of our faith. And when we get there, there be no more sad memories or even of this life. But this life is over. And we're in Brother Larry's perfect peace with God. A thousand years are like a day. Could you imagine being in a place of perfection? The desire to your heart is there. Wow. That's where I'm headed. But to see my loved one, I, I have missed my father. Every father's day, I'd love to be able to hug you one more time. Just one more time. When I was 15, I thought he was the dumbest man in the world. <laughs> when I got a family of my own, I realized that's the smartest person I've ever knew. My father. But you know, he loved me unconditionally. Did he correct you? Oh, hallelujah, did he? <laughs> but my dad loved me and I loved my dad, but he preached me the truth. 57 years old. As we stood there, I had to read at this favorite little Bible. Talk about when he finished his course. His race is over. But he did it like a champion. Sometimes I'd like to just say, Dad, what would you do in this situation? He had told me the same words he told me on his deathbed. The last thing he spoke with me. Love people and preach the word. Last thing he told me. But I'll get to see him, Dale. Never to say goodbye. My little cousin, like my brother, that was killed in 75 on the old river bridge. I'll see Richard. I'll see Mandy. I'll get to see my child that I've never got to see my first one. You got a brother or a sister in heaven. Y'all do? Can't wait to meet him. Baby Layla. That's heaven. But the first thing I got to do is fall at the feet of someone that loved me when I was unlovable. When I was in this court, it should have been passed away that reached his hands of mercy to me. He said, come and be my child. David, it's worth it all. To see your mother, know you'll see her again. Because of that little lady behind you over there, witnessing and leading her to Jesus Christ. Heaven is going to be worth it all. The desires of our heart, can you imagine? Now, I don't know if we'll have the same mindset. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But Dallas, I'm going to beat you every game of golf. I played you for here and out. You big moose, I'm going to get you. David Curtis, I'm going to outkill you on every buck. Mine's going to score more. I have had to take all this torment, Rick, down here. But when I get there, the desires of my heart, I'm going to ask him when I get there, can I beat Dallas and David Curtis in everything from now on? I think the first thousand years I'll be wrapped around this thing. Then I hear somebody, Brother Mike, give me a hug and it'll be Mama Jewel. Heaven, Janie's going to be worth it all. 
the Corinthians it says this in chapter 4. This light affliction that we face now is but for a moment. The things that we're going through now is temporary, but the place we're headed is eternal. So I can't help what the rest of the world decides to do. Doc, I'm going to follow Jesus all the way to heaven. Today I ask you to bow your heads with me. And I just want to, I want to pray. Savior, I don't understand all the hardship that everyone here today faces. I don't know, God, the adversity that they endure every week. But your word says, as you told Paul, your grace is sufficient. Somehow or another today, I want you to touch the heart of every man, woman, boy, and girl in this sanctuary. To let us get our eyes off of the rest of the world and what they're doing. But this is an individual relationship between us. Let my focus remain on you. And let me be approved by you. There's things in my life that I need to get rid of, God. Just break my heart and convict me, and I'll let them go. But I long to be with you. So let my life be pleasing and begin to do a work on me today. To let me be found worthy. Let me be found acceptable. And for these things, I give you praise. Now, while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I felt this morning, if there's someone here that needs prayer for your body, I just want you to come quickly. If you need prayer for your body, you've been suffering and you need a touch of the Savior, I want you to come. I'm